In this next example, instead of uh, doing the acid catalyst addition of two equivalents of an alcohol, I'm actually using ethylene glycol here, which is a diol. And so it only actually requires one equivalent because it itself has two alcohol functional groups. Uh, and as a result, you end up forming a ring and you get what we'll often refer to as a cyclic acetal. So, and it turns out the equilibrium constant for forming these is much more favorable uh, just due to entropic effects. You've got one less reactant, same number of products, it's entropically more favorable uh, than having to add two equivalents of an alcohol instead of just one equivalent of ethylene glycol. Now, just want to show you the intermediate here so you know kind of where this is going and stuff like that. So, uh, we're eventually going to end up with an alcohol, that's this oxygen here, and then we'll have attached our ethylene glycol on one side. So, and then for the second half of the reaction, that would be a hemiacetal, notice you had a carbon with an OH and a carbon with an O carbon chain. So your hemiacetal, you'd protonate the OH and have it leave, and then the other side of ethylene glycol would come in and attach and eventually get you this lovely cyclic acetal. Now there's two things that are really, really nice about this cyclic acetal. And one, it is completely reversible. You just add H3O plus and it comes right back off, you get your ketone back. The second thing that's really nice is how it reacts with a nucleophile and more specifically how it doesn't. So we know nucleophiles can react with ketones. So it turns out there is nothing electrophilic about this cyclic acetal. This carbon right here is not going to be electrophilic in the same way that a ketone's uh, carbonyl carbon would be. And so nucleophiles don't react with these. And so if you want to protect a ketone, protect it from getting attacked by a nucleophile, you can temporarily turn it into one of these cyclic acetals and then deprotect it with H3O plus when you're done. Let's take a look at why we'd want to do this in a synthesis problem. All right, so I'm posing a problem here and we want to add a carbon nucleophile, in this case a Grignard reagent, and I only want to add one equivalent. And the problem is we have both a ketone and an aldehyde. Well, in this case, aldehydes are more reactive. So if I only add one equivalent, the aldehyde is going to be the one that most likely reacts. And that's what we're going to do up top here. So here it's just the aldehyde carbon that's reacting and adding a methyl group. And so in this case specifically, I'd want to add one equivalent of a methyl Grignard reagent. So, and then I'd follow that up with either H3O plus or water to protonate and uh, protonate that, the resulting alkoxide intermediate that forms. So that's great, lovely. The problem is, what if I actually wanted to react with the ketone, not the aldehyde, and get this product? So we'll add the methyl group and the hydrogen across what used to be that carbonyl. So the problem is, aldehyde is more reactive, so it's not going to work. So what you are going to do is take advantage of the fact that aldehydes are more reactive and protect them preferentially first. So instead of adding one equivalent of Grignard first, we're going to add one equivalent. Of our protecting group, and technically I didn't need that one right there. I meant to say one equivalent. So we're going to add one equivalent of our protecting group, and if we only add one equivalent, who gets to react? Well, the aldehyde does. So in this case, we'd end up with our ketone is still a ketone, but our aldehyde is now part of a cyclic acetal. So and it's totally protected when we go to act a, add a nucleophile here in the next step. So now we're going to add our Grignard reagent follow it up with an acid workup step, either H3O plus or water. So, and that acid workup step right here is going to accomplish two things. One, it's going to protonate the resulting alkoxide, but two, it's going to deprotect so we get our aldehyde back as well. So again, we learned that with these cyclic acetals, you can deprotect them with H3O plus. So the H3O plus we add in step two, dual purpose, protonate the alkoxide, and then deprotect so we get our aldehyde back. Cool. That's how you'd pull this off. Uh, for wanting preferential uh, reaction of the Grignard with the ketone instead, you just protect the aldehyde first. This is probably going to be a point of synthesis, a uh, point of importance for synthesis in this chapter for you, FYI.